Hey guys, the Brothers Boyd here, and we're here with some exciting news today. I got Josh sitting in on the couch in the new studio, and Daniel is in the movie room, and Chris is in the old sanctum sanctorium of uh, his dining room slash recording studio. And today was a very exciting day for a lot of us here in the world of DC and comic books. Today was, instead of D-Day, why don't we call it DC Day, because... Today was the day that James Cameron, I mean, James Cameron, listen to me, where are we going, Avatar? No. James Cameron and Peter Different Safran. Different people in D.C. <laughs> uh, no, Different we don't want people in D.C. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, but uh, James Gunn and Peter Safran and I guess Warner Brothers released some information about uh, hopefully maybe the next uh, 10 years, maybe not all 10 years, but we did get 11 total projects mentioned in today's news and uh, just, uh, you know, kind of uh, five films, five TV shows and one Elseworld film. So, yeah, Elseworld. So, yeah, that was really cool. So uh, first and foremost, and Josh, I'll let you lead off the very first thing and obviously going to be the leader of this whole thing was the first movie that they released. Uh, that was going to come out July 11th, 2025, I believe. Yes. Superman Legacy. All right, Josh, how excited are you? Oh, I am I am bursting at the seams, dude. James Gunn called it the beginning of the DCU. Um, we're getting a young Superman. We're not getting an origin story. We're getting a Superman who is the kind Superman they his uh, words were he's old fashioned in a world that is not and i love it we are getting a true superman i cannot true justice wait. in the american way right a better yeah, tomorrow I'm super excited too. a better tomorrow <laughs> yeah absolutely absolutely it's gonna be amazing i cannot wait um and and, and the image he chose to use chris I, yeah, I actually grabbed that today and saved it on my phone. It was really good. All-Star Superman. That's exactly what it is. That is yeah, a absolutely. great read if you've never read it. Absolutely. It's going to be a take. And, and it's a good time to be excited for uh, Superman, Daniel. I know you said you just read it, and I sat down last night and read uh, Action 1051. No wow. Spoilers. I hadn't read it yet. <laughs> no spoilers, but I'm <laughs> telling you. That should have been the first thing you read. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, Josh has got to catch up a little bit because he hasn't read Lazarus Planet, and it kind of ties in a little bit with that as well. So, um, but yeah, just I, I don't know. I, you know, I've never been super excited about Superman, but this made me super excited about Superman again. And and, and if you've got me excited about Superman, the biggest Batman fan in the world, then you've done something. So, uh, he used a very Daniel Howard, Howard legacy. Uh, Daniel, how are you feeling about Superman Legacy? I really wish that I could have gotten maybe one more film with Henry Cavill. I think a lot of people felt that way, but I am very happy that we are going to get Superman and just wipe the slate clean, send him out the gate as being a helpful Superman, hopeful, you know, the kindness, lead with kindness is I think what Peter Safran said. And that's exactly what I want Superman to be. So that's a lot better. I think with Cavill, there was a lot of baggage. You had a movie where you introduced him by having him break another character's neck. And that really kind of started things off on a rough patch. And I think that's probably why they decided, you know what, let's just start over all over again. And that's, perfectly fine with me we get a younger superman you can last longer you don't have a lot of other things tying him up maybe get a lesser known actor who isn't blowing up the way cavill has the last few years and really can get a lot of legs and mileage out of this and i can't wait to see what they do with it um i think overall just this whole slate i don't want to get too far into it until the end but this whole slate's just kind of a perfect mixture of what dc comics is to me Okay, so let's do this, Daniel. You mentioned a young actor, possibly an unknown. Dreamcast is Superman right now because we don't have anybody. Do you have I, anybody? I don't have anyone, but you got to remember, no one knew who Christopher Reeve was before they made um, Superman the movie. 
So this might be the best bet. Find somebody that's not known at this point right. and let them really shine. Wouldn't it? Well, Josh, how about you? That's that's what I'm hoping for as well. Give me somebody who looks the part but is not weighed down by baggage, and we are looking at him as he is Superman and not as any other character that he's played. Oh, come on, Josh. You know you wanted Nick Cage as Superman at least once. <laughs> only, so, only, if, only if Kevin Smith writes it. <laughs> so I'm going to throw this out here because this name kind of popped in my head. I don't think it would be a good casting, but I think he could pull it off. Uh, do you guys remember Logan Lerman, who was Percy Jackson? Yes. He could totally pull off a young uh, Clark Kent, I believe. Um, but, uh, yeah, I'm like you guys. I think we should get a, a unknown like a Christopher Reeve who walked in and, you know, always outside of the norm because we know what Michael Keaton did for Batman when he walked onto the set of that and he was totally not right for that part but he but he was and we just didn't realize it so um all right so looking down and one of the one of the last things I want to say about this movie I, I was reading this article it says that James Gunn says that Superman is for everyone that's a four quadrant film that should speak to everyone in the world so he wants this Superman to be for everybody, not just for any particular person. All and right, so the next movie, right way, to go. Huh? right way to go. Yeah, absolutely. Make him make him the Superman that we grew up with, and I have to believe that's the way to go. Um, the next thing we got in, and one of the things that was mentioned, and we're staying right in the same uh, super family on this uh, particular website, Supergirl World of Woman of Tomorrow. And my understanding is Tom King was in the writer's room when they were doing all this with them. So I believe we're taking some inspiration from that mini series that just came out like a year ago. Um, Completely. Do you, guys think, do you guys think we get Sasha Kelly or are we move into someone else? What What are your thoughts on that? Well, they did say the Flash movie is a the reboot point. So it could be Sasha Kelly. But it really depends. Is Sasha Callie playing um, playing Kara, or is she playing a different version of Supergirl? Right, right. Because if they're doing Supergirl Woman of Tomorrow, it's Kara, and yeah. that that is that is who that story is about. I have it. I've read it. I'm not a big fan of Tom King, but I did enjoy that story for what it's worth. And Daniel. I got one character that I can't wait to see in live action, and he was a big part of that story. Crypto the Superdog. Uh, yes, I would love to see Crypto the Superdog. I want this just to be as wonderfully weird as possible. I want to see Crypto. I want to see Robin. I want to see, like, the Bat family, which that's – we'll talk about that in a moment. But I just want yeah. the DC to just just go all out, really differentiate themselves from Marvel and make make <laughs> – Make these kind of things where you have super dogs, bring in bat mite, yeah. bring in all that stuff. Just be weird and wonderful about it. We need we need Ace Bat Hound as well. He's got to be there. Yes. Um, yeah. Um, here's my pick for who should play Supergirl. They won't go there. No, nah, they're not going not there. Going they back. already threw some shade at the um Arrowverse a little bit. That's yeah, but you know, thing. she did. She did okay for what she had. She was yeah, a good supergirl, yeah. and she was fun to watch. A um, lot of those folks on the um on the Arrowverse, in my opinion, are fantastic, but they were never really given the budget or the appreciation they really should have gotten. So absolutely, absolutely. But yeah, we'll just have to wait and see. Um, I'm not sure when that movie is coming. Um, but uh, hey, two Superman based movies. Uh. Haven't we had something like this before? Didn't we have one with uh, Helen Slater a long time ago? Yeah, 1985. So, uh, yeah, 1985. Christopher cool. Reeve and Helen Slater. Maybe we'll get this, some kind of combination like that. Um, all right, the next one, uh, this, is, uh, this is the one I'm super excited about. We're getting the brave and the bold. It is Batman and Damian Wayne. So we're going to get Batman and Robin, and we're actually going to see Damian Wayne in a, in a movie. So we get to see Batman's son, uh, Bruce Wayne's son, uh, which we all know. Uh, if you don't know, spoilers, uh, you might want to not listen. Uh, Damian's mom is Talia Al Ghul from the League of Shadows. She is Raj's daughter. 
And so uh, Damien basically the first 10 years of his life was raised up as an assassin and learned as an assassin before he came to live with Bruce and become the new Robin. So I'm excited to see that dynamic uh, right now in the comics. It's a really good dynamic. Um, and then we'll see the first uh, DCU version of Batman. Yes. Uh, what do you guys think about that? You know, we're getting another Batman. We're going to have two Batmans existing at the same time. Well, first off, Chris, I love that they went straight for Damian Wayne and their source of inspiration was Grant Morrison's run with the Absolutely. Introduction, introduction of Damian. Yeah. Which is some really great stuff. That's going to be a great introduction, a great story. It's going to have to be a little dark with Damien, but I think they're going to balance it with light. They chose the brave and the bold as the title. That's always been associated with Batman in the old gray and blue suit. Right, right. Gray and blue suited Batman in the movies. Um, let's, let's have a Batman with some color palette to it and just yeah. stop turning the um, darkness over on darker and darker and darker per movie, like actually have a little bit of color to it. I actually am really excited about this because I want to see the entire Bat family. I want to see Dick Grayson. I want to see um, Barbara. I want to see everybody. I want to see Batman have a support system like he does in the comics. And I really think that's where we're going with this and really differentiated itself from not only just Marvel, but from past movies, really, with Batman adaptations. And this is a great way to do it by actually going to the source. Yes. Oh, absolutely. And I'm excited to see the Bat family because, I mean, I've been reading Batman for like four years now. And we have the Bat family is gigantic, guys. You just don't realize how many are there until you start reading the comics. And, you know, to have Dick Grayson finally be moved on from being the Robin and to actually be uh, Nightwing. Um, that's going to be awesome. Uh, Somebody pointed out this online the other day, and I think it's very true of why we're like so protective of Dick Grayson as a character. He's from the same golden age. He's actually older than, um, he's actually almost as old as Superman. And that's uh, really saying something. Like he's been around a long time. Yeah. And he, I, I really hope we actually get to see him. He's getting the forefront in the comics now. I'm, Love Nightwing 100, guys. Go pick that book up. But also, I want to see him in these movies. And I think that's, I think we're going to see him fairly soon. Yeah, Night, Nightwing, its character is great. Uh, I don't know if any, um, you guys have probably already seen uh, season four, uh, the first episode of uh, Titans. Uh, yeah. You get this great fight between Nightwing and some ninjas. Yeah. And it's probably one of the best fight scenes I've seen in a TV show in a long time. And it was just so cool to see Nightwing because, I mean, his character needs to get that recognition and out there. So what do you think? We actually get uh, the kid from uh, the kid from uh, Third Rock from the Sun to come back and be Dick Grayson? No. no. <laughs> He's too old. Uh, yeah, he, he would be a better Bruce Wayne at this point than the, at his age than he would be uh, yeah. Nightwing. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. So we're just going to have to wait and see who they cast as Bruce Wayne. I mean, it's just, I, again, I think maybe we go no somebody we don't know. Yep. Um, so, you know, maybe it's, uh, maybe it's, uh, oh, which one of the Chris's is it? The Star Lord right now. Chris Pratt is Bruce Wayne. Right. Yeah. <laughs> well, now, John did say bringing some actors with him. Yeah. Yeah. Let's see. Uh, Dave that's, that's another role Wayne. that maybe that's another role that maybe we don't give to someone that's so widely recognized to. Yes, agreed. And, and I'm interested and that, to see. I, that's another thing about Ben Affleck. I looked at Ben Affleck and saw Ben Affleck yeah. playing back. So that's yeah. Another thing we need to see is what age we're going to get Damien when we come in with too. I mean, are we getting a ten-year-old Damien? Are we getting a teenage Damien? Where are we going with this? That'll be interesting to see as well. Yeah, I, I think he's probably going to be about thirteen, fourteen. If yeah, we're inspired that's probably by Morrison with the introduction, he should be ten years old. We yeah. should get an introduction of Batman just finding out about his son. It should, I mean, that would be a great story. Batman has to come to grips with being a father. 
that would be just yeah. Yeah. that that would be a good yeah. introduction. Maybe the first act he's like chasing down Rachel Ghoul, you see how Batman operates and then you introduce introduce Damien and just throw the entire audience off. That would be great. Yes. Right. Uh, well, sticking with the whole uh, Trinity thing, uh, the next thing I see on my list, we're going to get Wonder Woman story, but we're not getting Wonder Woman. We're getting Paradise Lost, an HBO Max series. It's going to be a Wonder Woman prequel series, and they're giving it the label a Game of Thronish story. Um, yeah. So we're going to see, I guess, maybe the formation of Themyscira and the origin and find out how they got there, what went on. And I don't know if you guys have read uh, yet, but I just finished the um, Wonder Woman Historia books, and they kind of give a short um, three-book uh, deal on how that came to be and stuff, as how Themyscira and how, um, I'm going to screw her name up, Hippolyta. Um, Hippolyta. Hippolyta. Hippolyta, how she, you know, wound up at Themyscira, had a, you know, and in charge of the Amazons and stuff. So, yeah. So, that should be pretty interesting, too. And it says right here that it appears to be a callback to uh, Phil Jimenez and George Perez's Paradise Island Lost series that explored the Civil War on Themyscira. So, you Get know. Phil Jimenez to be the, um, be the person, like, you base your art and everything off of let him like design the production and everything and character design and stuff because that first issue of the um amazon's book that just came out that kelly sue DeConnick did is one of the most gorgeously drawn comic books i have ever seen i absolutely agree daniel that that's a beautifully drawn book I, you know it the other two are good but they just they pale in comparison to that first one for some reason uh, so yeah, so uh, there's your Trinity right there. We're gonna get you know Superman. You know we're gonna prop up all these other heroes with the big three and uh, start adding in. The next thing I've got coming up, and this one was like, whoa, we're going somewhere that I never thought we would go. HBO Max series Booster Gold. Yes. How, you know, I, we, I'm not a bit shocked. Gold. I think that James Gunn's sense of humor like fits perfectly with this. I'm figured he would want to get that character out sooner rather than later. It's like the perfect James Gunn character. And 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 Daniel, I don't know who is playing Ted Cord in the Blue Beetle film, but my understanding was he was going to be a mentor to Jamie Reyes. And if that's true and you've got Booster Gold, then you've got Blue and Gold. You've got yes. Blue Beetle and Booster. Yes. Right. I, I think Great I, I hope they keep Jaime Reyes around because for this, I mean, he's really got just going to get a chance in his first movie, and they got, they got a great actor to play him, in my opinion, so I hope that he keeps, stays around. Well, according yeah, they, to they Guns and Mouse, so he will be. Yeah, I'm super excited. They they didn't say it was uh, not over, but, you know, you know, it just said it was the dawn, so that's coming. Uh we couldn't have a, you know, just to stay in line with everything, we do have an animated movie coming called Creature Commandos. Um, I believe that Rick Flagg is actually uh, tied in with this as well. Uh, we're going to get some characters. Uh, this was a series where you had Frankenstein's monster, a werewolf, a vampire, and a gorgon all fighting Nazis in World War II. So... Nice. Uh, <laughs> so this sounds like it's going to be a, a a great show. I mean, a great animated show, a good way to tell this story. Although I, I really love the way Marvel did uh, Werewolf by Night and give us a live action one of those. Uh, so they shouldn't be scared to do that. Yep. And guys, my uh, phone is going to do yeah. something stupid. Yep. So sorry yep. about that. Y'all take him for just a minute yeah. and run well, with well, it. Well, Chris, according to what I read today, Gunn is doing this series. He's written, produced, and all that for it. It's a seven-episode series. It is animated, but the voice actors they have chosen to play the parts will play the parts in live action as well. They will seamlessly move the characters from animated to live action and from live action to animated in the DCU, which is something that Marvel has not done yet. 
that's um Lucasfilm has actually done, tried to do that a little bit. Yes. Um, um, and this may be a little bit of a spoiler here, but apparently Lars Mikkelsen is playing um, Grand Admiral Thrawn not only in animation but in live action. That so, would be awesome. Yeah, that's um, my, my understanding is the Rick Flag we're meeting in this creature commandos, Chris, is Rick Flag Senior, which okay, is the yeah. same character we got in Suicide Squad. It's his dad. Um, we have Sean Gunn, of course, playing Weasel. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And they Wait. have not mentioned who is playing any of the other characters. But they will bring those other ones in as well. The picture they released today looks really cool. The animation looks great for it. All right, guys. Sorry. This, uh... And that actually will be our thing to, get... to the DCU. We're going to get that first. Yeah. That's, Wait, what I think, yeah, that's going to be the first, one of the first projects that's released, I think, isn't it? Didn't he say? He said okay. that and then Waller, which we yeah. haven't mentioned yet, and yeah. then Superman Legacy would be the first film. Yeah, so let me move on down. Then the very next thing we got is the Waller, and that's Amanda Waller series. And you've got to believe that... Uh, we're going to get uh, Gunn's wife in, involved with this as well because, yes. you know. <laughs> but not only this, but this is a great way to show the universe, bits and pieces of the universe with how far reaching she is in, in, this, in general. So it'll be nice to see that. And Viola Davis is just incredible. Like, I don't know how else to describe like her acting ability, but just absolutely incredible. I mean, yes. you are very intimidated by her. Her presence is just demands respect and scared, and to be scared at the same time. Yeah, and I'm I'm calling this Peacemaker season 1.5 because good. Yeah, yeah, I totally agree. I think we're taking a break from Peacemaker right now, and we're doing uh, we're doing this Waller series. Um, you know, you got to believe that Gunn's wife will be there. You know. Uh, They've already brought in Jeremy Carver, um, who was running Doom Patrol. Yes. He's going to be running this show. So um, yeah. good on him. And uh, the Watchman writer will be involved as well. Now, I'm not sure if that's the actual movie or, guys, I'm sorry. This thing is just doing what I, it wants to do tonight. I think it's the show on HBO Max, Chris. I think, I think he was the writer on that. Um, yeah. Now, Gunn also said that this would have the cast and characters from Peacemaker in there. Yeah, exactly. He's yeah. not going to yeah. let that get away from him because uh, that was too much of a success for him. So I think, uh, yeah. All right, guys. Sorry. I'm just, I don't know what's going on here with this thing. It wants to. So, yeah, so we got Waller coming. Uh, I don't have an official date on when that's coming, but that's the next thing we got to look forward to. Uh, we're doing a lot of shows. We're looking forward to a lot of shows coming. Um, so we've got those. Let me roll on out. Uh, the next show we got listed, and this was a pleasant surprise for me, we're getting the Lanterns, the Green Lantern show, and we're getting two Lanterns, which is outstanding. And... Uh, this thing is just going to die on me tonight. Sorry, guys. I don't know what is going on here. Yeah, we're getting we're getting Hal Jordan and John Stewart, which is the way it should be. We're going to be introduced to both of them. Daniel, I don't know if you've seen it. You may have, but he called it a true detective style show, which was an yes. HBO show. Yes. Um, I have not seen True Detective. I've heard a lot of good things about it, but it sounds like it's going to be a procedural in space, yes. <laughs> basically, because not only are they like Earth, but Earth is all like Earth is part of a sector in the Green Lantern universe. So you've got Green Lantern, you've got um, you got Earth and like several surrounding systems around Earth that they all look after. But um. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to this. It's a nice way to introduce them, introduce the concept of Green Lantern without breaking the bank because trying to do a film about Green Lantern, you expect to be huge, and but you can kind of make this big enough, but not too huge, uh, like a movie huge. 
and still have the concept. So when you do have use a little bit of budget, it's going to look really good. Right, right. And with the way the things they do now, I mean, you look at like what Marvel did or what Disney did with Obi-Wan and what we've done with like Falcon and the Winter Soldier thing. Uh, HBO's got that money right there to do the same thing and Warner Brothers uh, to create some quality shows. And what a great way to introduce the Lanterns uh, without you know, uh, taking that risk that people are going to look at that and go, oh, no, it's not another Ryan Reynolds Green Lantern. Let's just <laughs> give this one a pass. Introduce it because one thing is the Lanterns is such a big uh, a big deal. You got to get all, if you start introducing a lot of Lanterns in there, it's a lot easier to spread it out over a series of shows than try to shove them all in one movie and get and people used to seeing them. It's a you know? large concept, and I think Jeff John's run showed that it's huge and you can't just like shove what that run was into like a mo like one one two hour movie it's it's huge it needs time and space to breathe so putting it in a um tv show is great and and james gunn made the comment that this series is going to play a big part in the main story that they're telling that this yeah is absolutely absolutely one of the things i noticed and um, I think I failed to mention in the beginning and right now is a good time to mention uh, the name of this uh, whole set is going to be uh, Chapter One Gods and Monsters. Yes. And with that knowledge, one of the next movies that was introduced is going to be Swamp Thing, the movie. And I'm super excited about that because I don't think Swamp Thing has gotten his fair share on these movie deals. And I think it's time he gets his own kind of deal where we actually see Swamp Thing. We we had the and beginnings of a good. fantastic television series that they yes. basically killed because the state of North Carolina misrepresented how much the state of North Carolina misrepresented how much money they were willing to give the um, show to film here. <laughs> and, right, right. And, and that seems to be an issue, you know, it, it is a much bigger budget than uh, what they should have had I right, guys this is ridiculous i guess i'm just gonna have to hold my phone and watch it um but uh yeah. this thing just is losing its mind i gotta find a better one it's fine when we're traveling anyway yeah so swamp thing is coming um don't know where we're gonna come from what we're gonna use or how that's gonna work um but uh i'm hoping you know, for island more swamp thing yeah, I yeah I hope so too. And uh, so we're looking at, and, and as I'm reading this, it says Swamp Thing is going to be the horror film that ends Chapter One, DCU's Chapter One. So it looks like this will be the last film we get at the end of Chapter One. Um, I know one of the things he said was that uh, there would be a lot of mashups and stuff in this one. Yeah. Like almost, this was, uh, would almost be like a sem semi team up movie at some point in time, uh, maybe with Superman and Batman showing up. Um, so we will see how that works and see if we can get some cool things going there as well. Uh, so yeah, super excited for that one as well. Um, but with that being the last movie, that's not all the movies they were suggesting though. Um, we are getting the authority. Um, don't know how much you guys know about the authority. I'm kind of a, I know nothing about the authority. So y'all run with that because I don't know what's coming there. Well, the authority is basically, um, it's basically what would happen if superheroes became, if the government actually ran with superheroes, they will become like authoritarian it's like authoritarianism, basically. I mean, they basically put it out there in the title. It's authority. Um, they're um, very hardcore. They're violent. They use any means necessary. Um, it's very unsettling a little bit. Um, but it's really well written. Um, you, the way that the authority are being written in comics now, the authority went up in space with Superman and yes. they came back down and they had like massive respect for Superman and actually trying to better, trying to better themselves now. So, I mean, it's uh, the authority has some good to them, but they're, they're basically, 
they were like being used by the government to be like authoritarianism, basically. <laughs> now, now so my understanding between between Justice League and Suicide Squad. Yeah, right. They're good guys, but they yeah. go about things a different way. Yeah. Now, the, the authority yeah. was created in Wildstorm Comics, correct? And were yeah. eventually brought into. So this is kind of Jim Lee's baby right here and kind of being brought in. Um, yeah. And in my understanding is the writers and creators and artists did not find out about them having their own movie until today when we all did, yes. which is kind of a cool thing. So... Uh, yeah. We're so, apparently we're getting more Wildstorm in the DC universe, um, live action or animated or whatever. But like their Wildstorm characters are going to be part of this. So bring on the Wildcats, baby! <laughs> I would, cool. Django, I would think so. With Jim Lee in in charge of DC Comics, and there yeah. James Gunn is working very closely with the comics to make sure there's some continuity between the comics and the movies. Well, not only that, but I noticed something when the Shazam trailer dropped um, last week. You um, saw, I don't know if you noticed at the end of the trailer, there was a little tag at the end to show, hey, if you're enjoying Shazam, read these three trades right here. I feel like that might have been something that James Gunn's going to push for. It's like, hey, you know, let's have some continuity between this and like have people go out to the shops and read these books that we're making these movies on to keep that part of the um, thing healthy, too. I love that James Gunn is a comic fan and he is doing everything he can for this medium. That's a big thing for me. Okay, guys. Um, Chris, the 11th project was the Else World, right? Yep, we're moving on to the Else World project. So it was announced today that the Batman would be called the Batman Part 2. You know, not very creative, but it works. And then also we would be getting that movie in october i believe it says october the 3rd 2025 so we're going to get a superman movie and a batman movie in the same year um the the uh they've decided that matt reeves has done such an excellent job with batman that uh rather than try to make, bring him into the fold with the dcu uh they have this thing in dc called else worlds if you're not in, uh, ever heard of it it's basically stories told about the characters but they're set in a different earth or on a different um, universe slash hence the multiverse. Yes. So uh, Matt Reeves, the Batman gets to survive the uh, storm that took out uh, Bat, uh, Batgirl and uh, several other shows. And uh, we will get more of Matt Reeves, the Batman. And, and I'm excited for that. I don't know what you guys thought of the Batman, but to me, it was probably the best Batman movie I've seen since the dark Knight um very very good movie um but again we focused more on batman this time for the first time instead of the even though the riddler was a very intimidating presence in that movie we did get batman this time and we got to see the detective so oh. i was very happy to see that the yeah, first so batman can... film to feel like the comic books yeah well it's Not definitely the uh yeah. It's definitely a very Batman focused. Like the whole story is about Batman becoming a bigger hero, and like it's not about you know the Joker like stealing every bit of scenery or anything like that. That's been a problem since the '89 Batman. Like the villains steal the scenery so much that Batman kind of almost becomes a presence in the background, really. The instead of like yeah, the hey, uh, Daniel. That's been a problem since 1966 when Cesar Romero had that mustache painted over and was stealing scenes. <laughs> well, Cesar Romero was a scene stealer, definitely. But yeah. yeah. <laughs> right. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed our talk tonight. We're about to run out of time. So until next time, we will see you at the shop.